Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please have your notebook ready, your notes, and your textbook so you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for joining me with this lesson. This lesson covers the RN nursing care for peripheral nervous system disorders such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, myasthenia gravis, MG, peripheral nerve trauma, restless leg syndrome, and diseases of the cranial nerves. This is just a very quick overview. The peripheral ner nervous system is composed of the spinal nerves, the cranial nerves, and the autonomic nervous system, if you may recall. Its function is to provide communication from the brain and the spinal cord to other parts of the body. Neuropathy or peripheral neuropathy is a global word that is used to refer to any acute or chronic disease disorder or damage to the peripheral nervous system. Typical clinical manifestations of neuropathy include pain, muscle cramps, and muscle weaknesses. Acquired neuropathies are, a group, are grouped into three broad categories, the inflammatory neuropathies, the traumatic neuropathy, neuropathies, and the systemic neuropathies. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand the nursing care involved, including the pathophysiology, the clinical manifestations, and the diagnostic uh, criteria to assist in the diagnosis of the diseases of the per peripheral nervous system. You should be able to collaborate with other healthcare team members in providing safe and effective care for patients with these disorders. Let's now do a quick overview of Guillain-Barre syndrome or acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Uh, that it's a uh, polyneuropathy that affects the peripheral nervous system, causing motor weakness and sensory abnormalities. Uh, there is demyelination of the peripheral nerves occurring at varying degrees. Um, this is an immune-mediated medi pathological process where the immune system starts attacking and destroying the myelin sheath that surrounds the axons and the peripheral nerves. Okay, you need to remember that uh, GBS patients uh, have may have ascending paralysis, sensory changes in cranial nerve involvement, and autonomic manifestations. Uh, the paralysis may increase in intensity until the muscles cannot be used and the patient is almost completely immobile. And sometimes the patient may get uh, so weak that they may require mechanical ventilation. Three stages that make up the disease process. There's the acute course, which can last between one to four weeks. And this uh, acute course is uh, measured by when no longer deterioration is happening. Then there's a plateau period. And then, of course, there's the recovery phase. Uh, there's no clinical or lab finding that confirms the diagnosis, an increase in CSF protein level without an increase in cell count is a distinguishing feature that may tell us that this is probably um, GBS. This may not be noted, however, in the first one to two weeks of the illness. Uh, the patient is gonna either going to have plasmapheresis, which is the removal of circulating antibodies thought to be uh, responsible for uh, the destroying uh, of the myelin. Um, or they may have an IV immunoglobin, which has been proven to show that it can be as effective as a plasma phoresis. Your notes provide a really detailed overview of myasthenia gravis. This is just a brief overview. A chronic disease characterized by remissions and exacerbations of fatigue and weakness, primary in the muscles uh, innervated by the cranial nerves, as well as the skeletal and respiratory muscles. This is considered an autoimmune disease, uh, and it may take many forms. It can be mild. Uh, and it can be a generalized weakness that may lead to death or respiratory failure. Okay, there's a, a syndrome of it called the Eaton-Lambert syndrome, uh, a form of uh, that is uh, uh, observed often observed in combination with small cell carcinoma in the lung. The muscles of the trunk and the pelvic shoulder girdles are most commonly affected. Uh, the patients with myasthenia gravis have an autoimmune disorder with muscle weaknesses and. Um, uh, including ocular symptoms and uh, may result in attacks in on the acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junc junction. Um, the, the notes and the textbook do go in a lot more detail. I would like for you to visit that. We want to make sure that we teach these patients, uh, especially if they're on a cholinesterase 
cholinesterase inhibitor drugs, and the families about the clinical manifestations of cholinergic and myasthenia crises. And um, it's going to be important that you understand uh, the pharmacological tests uh, for uh, the myasthenia gravis, the tensilone test, and uh, and the prostigmin test that help to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, make sure that you review myasthenia gravis in detail in the notes that I've provided. Peripheral nerve trauma can happen from an MVA, from sports, from uh, injection of drugs, and from being in the military or different things like that. There is an example of what a uh, normal uh, peripheral nerve would look like and what a compressed one or sh and if there's any sheath loss or disconnection or degeneration of the nerve. Okay, specific mechanisms of injury include partial or incomplete severance of the nerve or contusion or stretching or uh, ischemia or electrical activity or radiation injury. Okay, so the purpose of the surgical management is to restore function if they do recommend uh, surgical management. The provider may also recommend immobilization of that area with a splint or a cast, or you may have uh, things that may resolve the inflammation. Okay, patients, uh, as you take care of them, they're going to need to make sure you're doing neurovascular assessments and uh, you're following up on these uh, patients according to their symptomology. Restless leg syndrome, characterized by paresthesias associated with irresistible uh, urge to move. Uh, the most common type is associated with peripheral nerve or cranial nerve uh, damage in the legs or the spinal cord. Uh, it is a primary disease often that has a positive family history and they may have a, a genetic basis. Uh, uh, the drug therapy or non-pharmacological measures may be uh, prescribed. Uh, the dopamine agonists may be uh, given, such as Mirapex and Requip um, may be given. And uh, if the patient is having insomnia with restless leg syndrome, melatonin or any other uh, sleep aids may also help. You want to teach the patient with restless leg syndrome to minimize uh, risk factors for the disorder and include, uh, quit smoking, exercising and lose weight. A few uh, cranial nerve disorders that I want you to review. Cranial nerves are uh, may be affected in association with other disorders or a result of trauma. Uh, your textbook does talk about trigeminal neuralgia or tic de la rue. I want you to read on that. Uh, it is a disorder uh, that affects the trigeminal or the fifth cranial nerve. And also your uh, textbook does talk about facial paralysis in Bell's palsy. It's going to be important that you use these notes to understand how to take care of these patients, what the number one priority is, and uh, what kind of meds are given for these conditions. Thank you for listening into this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this really quick review of RN nursing care for patients with peripheral nervous system disorders. For questions about these notes uh, or for the questions about this lesson, please feel free to email me and have a lovely day.